I was about five years old when I got interested in fossils and paleontology. It's a discovery every second as I uncover rock from bone. It requires a lot of patience, but it's fantastic. We're trying to find, collect, and prepare fossils so they're stabilized over the long term and available for future scientists and or public display. The fossil preparators at the Royal Tyrrell Museum have the awesome job of exposing and preserving fossils that have been found across Alberta. So this is a plaster jacket containing two skull bones of a horned dinosaur, and it needs to be cut open. So I'm gonna be using what's called a cast cutter. This has a blade that rotates back and forth a few degrees either way, and we're just gonna run it along the edge to a depth of maybe half a centimeter all the way around, and then we should be able to lift the top of the jacket off like a lid. A fossil jacket is a very important component of fossil collecting. It basically holds everything together. The rock itself is often cracked, and the fossil as well is cracked and crumbly. So you need something to hold it all together. All kinds of fossils show up in the lab, from tiny mammals to huge dinosaurs. And they can be encased in very different types of rock. Soft sandstone often covers many of the fossils. It comes away pretty easily, and preparators can use picks, scalpels, even brushes. But they sometimes have to deal with very hard rock. I'm working on an armored dinosaur, an ankylosaur. It's about 110 million years old. And uh, what's cool about the specimen, it has all the armor in place, and it also has skin impressions. The specimen is in a very hard, fine sandstone, so it's a very slow process to expose the, uh, the bone and, and the skin impressions from the matrix. Uh, the zip gun is for bulk matrix removal far away from the specimen. The microjack is, again, for bulk matrix removal. That's a little bit close to the specimen, but far enough away, I'm not going to worry about damaging it. Uh, Chicago automatic is working for in and around close to the specimen. We're actually exposing um, some of the bone. Air scribes are a pneumatic tool. It allows me to basically run through incredibly hard rock, but with incredible precision. I'm only working on an area that's tiny, an inch or two, even down to the centimeter mark. When I'm that focused, my world shrinks to that size. Everything just kind of vanishes from around me. It's a really good tool. It's one of the only tools that was made specifically for paleontology, whereas a lot of the other tools we use have been pulled from other professions. This carbide rod as for fine tuning of matrix right next to the bone. Uh, we really hope that the matrix just pops off the surface cleanly. That's why you have to go really slow and take your time because you don't want to damage the surface or break the fossil. Like his colleagues, Mark is a very patient man. He's been working on this ankylosaur for four years and still has a year and a half to go. I'm working on an elasmosaur. It's about 100 million years old. It's basically like unwrapping a really well-wrapped Christmas present over many, many months. And that's the excitement that I get from it. Every time you uncover a little bone, it's a little victory. As the rock is removed, fossils are strengthened and joined back together with different kinds of glue. The last step is to make a support jacket for the fossil. The specimen is embedded in a tray of loose sand and then plaster and burlap are smoothed over top yet again and the jacket is trimmed and sanded down and that is the support jacket now for the fossil. So when it goes into a specimen cabinet, we know that the specimen's properly supported for its own safety and that will be the support jacket that that specimen will rest in for the rest of its days. But there are always more fossils to work on. Each specimen presents a unique technical challenge, so there's a lot of satisfaction when you reach the end, and you can look at it and realize you've done a very good job on it, and it's safe for future use, and then it's off to the next fossil. If I had an infinite lifespan, I'd be here for thousands of years, preparing just the backlog that we have in the Royal Terrell Museum. <laughs>